why it's super important to always stick to your buying criteria. And I'll tell you a story about a deal that just, I forgot my head. Hold on. I got my, got my hat and my mask dangled, dangled. All right. All right. Back to the story. <laughs> so deal popped up. I went and looked at it. I called the agent, told him what I was going to offer, wrote an offer, sent it in. It was way lower than what they were asking because what they were asking for was way too much for what the place needed, right? But I threw my offer in, they replied back, and they came down on their price by like 30K, which was sweet for the first time around. That's why I always offer low. And I came up a little bit, and we were still like $10,000 off. And I think they had another offer at probably the number that they were stuck at, which was fine. But the other offer didn't have, I think, the cool things that I had offered, which was a quick closing, um, no inspection, no appraisal, none of that. Just, it was a cash, cash deal, right? With none of that stuff. So pretty much as soon as they signed, they were guaranteed. I could, I, I had to close no matter what, right? And the agent did say that they liked that. And they ended up accepting the other offer because the agent called me and he's like, Ed, do you think, you know, that offer that you made is still going to be, you know, out there in case these guys can't perform? So to me, that sounds like that offer <laughs> that they got and they accepted, they weren't very, uh, very strong. <laughs> You know, maybe they didn't have very high confidence that these dudes could close. And I told them yes, but my offer was going back down to what I originally offered. The point of this video is not to lowball people, <laughs> but the point of this video is I offered what I offered because of the work needed. I can go into that. Maybe I'll still get the deal and then I can just actually tell the whole thing but the point of this video is to not let the time you spend like researching driving there looking at it underwriting thinking about it all that stuff like sway you to pay more even though it's only ten thousand dollars that we were off or whatever we were off i came up with the numbers i came up for a reason because I wanted to get a certain amount of return for the area where that place was at. Since we couldn't come to an agreement, that deal didn't make sense. It didn't meet my criteria. And I think what I know I always think about, like, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's 10 grand. I already spent all this time looking at it. It sucks that you have to lose it. But at the same time, it sucks that you have to pay more for something that you could get for less, right? So some things that I keep doing that I feel like I shouldn't be doing, but I just need to learn <laughs> to get better at is I usually always look at deals, mostly if they're like marketed like online, like MLS deals. I look at them as soon as they pop on the market. I always want to be like the first one to go look at it. And I try to call the agent and submit an offer right away. On this one, I waited a day like a dummy. I didn't like pull the trigger. I don't know what I was doing the other day, but I looked at it and I wasn't able to throw in an offer right away. So that was like the dumb thing I did, the first dumb thing. So why? Because since I have my license, I can go look at these things like right away. I can call the agent and I can throw in an offer like that. Like as soon as I see it, I like it. The numbers make sense. Throw in an offer, make it happen, right? What's the worst that can happen? They can say no, right? Or they counter back. The reason why it's so important to do that is most people that are looking at investment properties, they have to call their agent 
I'm like, hey, Mr. Agent, I need to go look at that. And since agents are awesome, <laughs> they're probably not gonna answer the phone <laughs> the first time. And then he'll call you back like two or three hours later. And then he's got some super agent training and you gotta work from home. So next thing you know, it's a day after at 5 p.m. when you can actually go look at this deal. When, if I would have been doing what I should have been doing, I would have looked at this place, had an offer, and my deadline was for them to make a decision before these guys even got to walk through it, right? So that's the point of this video. I guess there's two points. First one is don't let the time you spend researching, underwriting, all that stuff sway you to pay more or budge off of your investment criteria just because you spent the time on it. Yeah, spending time on stuff like that sucks. Wasting time sucks, but it's part of this business, right? You got to look at it like a million things to buy like 10, but that's how she goes. So, and the other point is as soon as it hits the market, look at it, throw an offer on it, call the agent, well, call the agent, throw the offer and make it a quick turnaround for them to actually have to respond to it. Hope you have a great day.